an Outback Steakhouse server was fired over her reaction to not receiving a tip on a $735 takeout order. During one of Tamlin Yoder's shifts at the restaurant in 2018, a church placed an order for 75 items that totaled just over $735. It took over an hour to prepare the order. Yoder helped them load the takeout meals into the car, but when they left, she was shocked to find that they had left no tip on the receipt. And Yoder just so happened to be a member of that church, which was even more hurtful. She took to Facebook to vent about her unpleasant experience with the customers. The next day, she was fired and told that they refunded the full $735 to the church because she had violated the company's social media policy. As a member of that church had seen Yoder's Facebook post and reported her to Outback Steakhouse. While takeout orders typically require less work in terms of service, customers should still consider leaving a five to 10% tip on takeout orders according to restaurant owner Marina Cherney. And there are times when you'd tip even more, such as when the server is especially attentive while you're waiting or the order is larger than normal. With that being said, tipping fatigue is real and there are many that believe that takeout orders shouldn't require a tip at all. Back to Yoder, she wasn't actually fired for being upset about not receiving a tip, but rather for violating the company's social media policy, which prohibits posting content that refers to customers in a derogatory manner. The church did try to make things right with Yoder, however, and compensated her with a much more than usual tip, as well as a list of takeout jobs that were hiring. Do you tip on takeout orders? <laughs> So I'm not tipping anymore. I'm done. I'm out. This man says he is no longer participating in tipping culture. Dustin Anderson's TikTok elicited many, if mixed, reactions, as he says he will no longer tip servers unless they provide exceptional service. He says that servers are just doing their jobs and shouldn't get an additional 20 to 25% of the bill for that. Instead, he would rather just pay the true cost of food and services provided by restaurant servers because he claims that he wants people to be taken care of. People in the comments were divided as many believe that tipping culture in the United United States has gotten way out of control, while others were quick to point out that servers need tips to make a livable wage and that dining out is a luxury in and of itself. Whether or not Anderson or anyone else likes the system, it's what we currently have and many servers rely on tips in order to make a living wage. The federal minimum wage for tipped workers is $2.13 an hour clearly not enough for anyone to make a living. Still, a survey found that only 65% of respondents always tip for table service and a shocking 5% never tip at all. Not tipping isn't sticking it to the man in our current system. It's just underpaying a server. What do you think? A woman was upset that a 10% gratuity was added to her restaurant bill and she asked to have it removed. She took to the Am I Being Unreasonable section of UK-based parenting site Mumsnet to ask if she was in the wrong. To be fair, there was small print on the menu stating that an optional charge would be added to the bill. When the bill came, the server pointed out the charge and offered to remove it, but this did not sit well with the woman. She would have preferred the restaurant ask her before adding the charge rather than having to request removal after the fact. Even though she was embarrassed, she had the charge removed. She was dining with friends and they had planned to leave a 5% tip, but in the end, they decided not to leave a tip at all. Tipping is the norm in the United States, and while it's not as common abroad, people can and do still tip for good service. In the United States, these kinds of automatic gratuities seem to be more and more common, especially for large parties. But research has pointed out that people don't like service charges and would rather have the option of tipping, especially when the service is good. And whether you like tipping or not, remember that most servers make the majority of their wages via tips. Have you ever asked to have an automatic gratuity removed from your bill at a restaurant? One server is calling out people who leave too small a tip on a bill, saying they would rather just not receive a tip at all. They took to the Tales From Your Server subreddit to vent their frustrations about an experience they had working as a server at a high-end steakhouse. They detailed how tables would rack up $100 plus bills and only leave a two to $4 tip. They recognize that not everyone can leave a large tip, but if you're spending that much on food already, this server finds it offensive to be tipped so little after working hard to serve the customers and they're not the only one that feels strongly about tipping. Many people believe tipping culture has gotten out of control. Nowadays, there's pressure to tip on everything, which doesn't sit well with many people. Heck, even those self-checkout machines at grocery stores are starting to ask for tips. In the United States, though, people in the service industry do rely on tips to make a living. 
In some cases, their hourly cash wage is as low as $2.13 an hour, so they rely on tips to make up the difference. And servers deserve to make a living wage. Until the system is completely overhauled, patrons will still be responsible for tipping their servers, and a tip that recognizes their hard work is appropriate and appreciated. A woman was asked to tip 25% on her groceries at a high-end grocery store. Everett Gray shared her tipping dilemma on TikTok. She was shopping at a store in Austin called Tiny Grocer, which she said was bougie and not where she normally shopped. You see, she and her boyfriend were having a date night and wanted something a little fancier than normal. When it was time to check out, the cashier rang them up and the total was $40. The cashier then spun that screen around and asked Gray to select the 25% tip on her $40 grocery bill. She said her jaw dropped and they grabbed grabbed their stuff and left. According to one of the comments on Gray's TikTok, Tiny Grocer pays their cashiers a living wage, so they have no idea why they would be asking for tips. Most people admitted that a grocery store is the last place they would tip a retail worker. Baristas and other food service workers rely on tips as the majority of their take-home pay, so their hourly wage is typically lower than that of other occupations, like grocery store workers who receive a higher set wage. As a general rule, tipping is an option, not an obligation, and opinions on tipping culture can get heated in the United States. Those who have decreased hourly wages and depend on tips deserve them, and most people would agree with that. In terms of employees who get a wage that is at or above the state-mandated minimum, though, it's a different argument. Does that mean it's wrong to tip? these employees? Absolutely not, but it is a choice and the best way to handle it is to do what you feel is right. A woman refused to tip after a seven-hour hair appointment because it already cost her $350. The woman, named Justice, posted a controversial TikTok where she showed off her braids and admitted that it was the first time she hadn't tipped her hairdresser. She went on the defensive, claiming that her hairdresser makes around $40 an hour after the cost of hair and that she works from home. She then praised her hairdresser's service and said that she will be going back. Justice also believes that tipping isn't the best way to express gratitude to a service worker, but rather respect them and their policies, arriving to your appointment on time, allowing them to take photos of their work after, and promoting them to friends and family are better ways to say thank you. People had mixed opinions in the comments of her video, with some calling out that tipping fatigue is real, while others believe that the hairstylist deserved a tip for her effort and skill. Seven and a half hours is a long time, after all. Most Americans agree that tipping culture has become unreasonable, with everyone from the grocery store to the oil change place asking for a tip, and a full two-thirds of Americans have a negative view of tipping culture. Many service workers, like restaurant workers, do rely on tips as a large part of their wage. But the argument is that those like Justice's hairdresser, who run their own businesses from home, can determine their own prices. Tipping is one way to express your gratitude for your hairdresser's services. And it is customary to tip 20% if you're happy with the service, but it's important to note that it's not required. Do you tip your hairdresser? Why or why not? When a customer left a note on their receipt instead of a tip for their server, it sparked quite a debate online. Instead of the customary 20%, the customer left a word of advice for their server on the tip line. Don't call my husband sweetheart. Okay, let's get a grip. Several servers, of course, called out the customer, saying that servers don't want your man, they want your money. And others pointed out that in many casual restaurants in other parts of the country, like the South, terms like sweetheart, honey, hon, are totally normal greetings that are used to show hospitality. Of course, not everyone agreed that using terms of endearment at work is exactly appropriate. But others felt getting upset about it says a lot more about the woman's insecurities in her relationship than it does about the server. Regardless of where one stands on this whole sweetheart issue, of all things, the fact of the matter is that servers rely on tips to live. Most states pay servers less than minimum wage, and many only pay the federal required minimum of $2.13 an hour. And while employers are required by law to make up any difference if a server shift doesn't add up to the federal minimum wage of a whopping $7.25 an hour, go up to any server alive and ask them how much luck they've had getting their employers to actually do so. Tip your server! Yeah, it's a bad system, but it's the one we have, and refusing to tip the usual 15 to 20 percent basically means you aren't paying the full price of your meal. And if you're doing so because your server used the word sweetheart, listen, there are much easier ways to meet a dude than working in a restaurant. So chances are high your server didn't clock in with the intention of stealing your man. They're just trying to make a living. 
customer at a restaurant asks the server how to not leave a tip on a credit card machine. Claire Blackwood, an actress and writer who works as a restaurant server on the side, wrote on X about this incident that left her flabbergasted. Her tweet said, Tonight at my restaurant job, a middle-aged white woman looked me right in the eyes, held up the debit machine to me and said, Can you show me how to not leave a tip? Blackwood defended her anger and frustration in the replies to her tweet, pointing out that if you can't afford to leave a tip, you shouldn't be going out to eat at a restaurant. This is just one of the latest examples of the debate surrounding tipping culture, and many Americans agree that things are getting out of hand. Two-thirds of Americans have a negative view of tipping, and 30% of respondents to a bank rate report simply said tipping culture has gotten out of control. However, despite their annoyances, 44% of U.S. adults who dine at sit-down restaurants typically tip at least 20%. Servers typically make very little through paid wages and depend on tips as a significant portion of their income. Of course, the bigger issue is that servers should be able to make a living wage through the hours that they put in. But since that hasn't been solved, don't be like the woman in Claire Blackwood's tweet. In the United States, tipping is expected and shows appreciation for the hard work of restaurant workers. <laughs> A restaurant manager confronted a man for leaving a 6% tip on a $600 check. In a since-deleted TikTok, a man named Jose said that he and his family were out at a restaurant celebrating his birthday. They split a couple of appetizers and had some drinks, and then one of Jose's family members decided that he wanted to pick up the tab. They paid, signed the check, and then the waitress went to the back. A few minutes later, the restaurant's manager approached the table saying that they noticed the tip was only 6%, and asked if it was because they were unhappy with the service. The person who paid immediately became embarrassed because they were being called out in front of everyone for their low tip. Jose and his group said they were happy with the service and they planned on leaving more tips and cash because what else do you do in that situation? Comments on the video were split with some saying that they thought the manager's actions were unprofessional and saying they would go as far as asking them to remove the tip completely. Others pointed out that the manager was just trying to find out if the service had been good or not and correct for a poor experience. After all, restaurant managers are responsible for ensuring that their customers have a good experience and that their staff is fairly compensated. If you're eating at a restaurant, you should know that part of your experience is going to be gratuity, as tips are the main source of income for front of house restaurant workers and bartenders in most US states. While 15 to 20% is customary, the final amount is largely based on the quality of service. And while it may feel embarrassing to have a tip amount questioned, a restaurant manager's job is to step in and ensure that the staff's service is up to par above all else. <laughs> A restaurant has created a wall of shame where servers are reprimanded for not getting 20% in tips. TikToker official BW has made a video about the restaurant in question. Servers at this restaurant in Florida are required to make 20% in tips, and if they don't, they are put up on the wall of shame and risk losing out on shifts. I used to be a server and a bartender, and I have countless examples of customers who are awful tippers. The father of one family in question looked me in the eyes, told me, you gave me great service. I'm going to give you a great tip and then proceeded to give me $5. They were a family of six that spent over $200. That is literally a 2.5% tip. And the wall of shame doesn't just extend a lack of tips. Servers are also put on this wall if they don't follow directions or do something incorrectly. The restaurant that I used to work for had a similar tactic where they would post negative Yelp reviews on the wall. And let me tell you that every single employee's reaction to this was simply, I do not care because I am not paid enough to care. Tipping is an issue that many Americans believe has gotten out of hand. There are many people who believe that servers don't deserve tips and that it shouldn't be on the customer to pay that part of their wage. Those grievances are misguided because under our current system, restaurants are held to literally no standard to pay their employees a livable wage. Federal minimum wage is laughably low. Why would restaurants pay their employees more when they know they will never face repercussions for exploiting their employees, making them rely on customer gratuity for a majority of their pay? And the way this restaurant is addressing what they deem as a performance issue, it's not actually gonna fix anything. Instead, it will just create a toxic and unsupportive work environment. A person who was dining alone had an 18% service charge added to their bill. A photo of the tab was posted to the mildly infuriating subreddit. Look, we've all heard of automatic gratuities for large parties, but for a party of one? It's perfectly legal to add service charges to checks, although in some states, restaurants are required to let customers know beforehand. Usually these types of fees are added to ensure that staff is compensated for their services. These automatic gratuities don't mean that a customer can't tip more, but they are a part of the bill and the 
customer is required to pay them. But according to research, people don't like service charges and would rather be left in charge of leaving their own tip, especially when the service is good. And as for the party of one thing, just because someone's dining alone, it doesn't mean that they're not going to leave a tip. So what do you think? Should restaurants add service charges even for parties of one? A customer removed the 18% gratuity that was automatically added to their restaurant bill. In a Reddit post, the customer posted a photo of the receipt that they received after dining at a restaurant. You'll notice here at the bottom it says that the 18% gratuity has been added and that the customer can either increase, decrease, or remove the gratuity. So this customer crossed out the gratuity and didn't pay it. People in the comment section were pretty split on the customer's refusal to tip, with some saying they shouldn't have to opt out of paying anything, while others argued that this person was wrong for taking away the tip entirely since it wasn't the server's fault this rule was instituted in the first place. It's just another back and forth argument in the name of tipping culture. According to Bankrate, roughly two in three US adults have a negative view of tipping. 41% said they believe businesses should pay employees better rather than relying so much on tips, while 30% believe that tipping culture has gotten out of control. Yet people still do tip. Almost half of US adults who dine at sit down restaurants typically tip at least 20%. And etiquette expert Elaine Swan says that it's never justified to not leave a tip. Servers shouldn't suffer because restaurants currently don't pay them a livable wage. They don't enforce the rules and tips are a major part of their income. How do you feel about tipping in the United States? Has it gotten out of hand? Well, everyone, it's finally happened. Tipping culture and the self-checkout have officially joined forces in one of the unholiest alliances of our time. A man was left shocked when he bought himself a wrap and a coconut water at the airport and was asked to tip at the self-checkout. He posted his story and photos to the mildly infuriating subreddit, really a misnomer in this case, wondering why he was asked to tip when he did all of the work himself. Who's getting all the tip money being collected by this self-checkout? Who knows? Of course, in the United States, we're used to tipping for basically everything, dining out, haircuts, grabbing a a coffee, basically anything where you're provided a hands-on service. But the hands-on service at a self-checkout? I provided the hands, bro, so get yours out of my wallet! It's not exactly surprising that according to a recent survey, fully two-thirds of Americans have a negative view of tipping, and 30% of Americans believe tipping culture has gotten completely out of control. But it's not likely to end soon, nor is the insanity of asking for tips at self-checkout, which is becoming increasingly more common all over the country. And since the Fair Labor Standards Act doesn't apply to, you know, machines, there's no way to know if these tips are even making it to employees. One thing is for sure though, Americans are finally catching up with the rest of the world and getting really tired of tipping, with some 40% feeling that companies should just pay employees a living wage instead. Of course, millions of employees still rely on those tips to make ends meet in our increasingly difficult economy, so we should all keep doing it until the system changes. But we can probably draw the line at making sure machines are properly compensated for their work. We haven't quite reached that level of dystopia. Pretty close, but thankfully not quite yet.